afternoon are we connected yes we are i believe i believe we are i'm anthony mosley collaborations artistic director we are here for a friday afternoon chat uh with my partner dr marcus robinson executive director of clever action sammy Rangel, executive director of life after hate and uh w- w- one of the incredible people featured in healing from hate a new film directed by Peter Hutchinson, who's with us today, a Big Ten Productions uh, film. And uh, Clever Action is just super honored and psyched to be co-hosting uh, the Chicago Digital premiere next week, December 10th to the 13th. Um, you, may be, you may be watching this uh, after you've just watched the screening. We're gonna talk about the film, how it was made, why it is so important. Uh, how it's changing the, the conversation and why you need to see it. And if you have seen it, well, you're going to get to meet Sammy and Peter. So I'm going to run the trailer and we'll come right back. first and this is our country look at me i'm on the edge of the the vanguard to save the white race guns ammo steel toe doc martens tattooing violence was just prerequisite to enter or exit life after hate was founded by ex neo-nazi white supremacists and they knew that they wanted to help other guys get out i can't tell you how many hundreds of people while they're in the movement are too afraid to leave what really changed me was receiving compassion from the people that I least deserved it from, when I least deserved it. You've got to find a way to find an affirmation in every discussion, no matter how bad it feels that it's going. It takes guts to do that. This is why the intervention can't rely on my charisma. We are like the anti-venom to hate, you know what I mean? Because we have, we had that venom in us and we know how to spew it and we know how to also make it an anti-venom. You should have been so badly broken that there's no way you could come back from this. If you did, so can he. Right. Someone in that life who may not be aware that there's a way out, you know, what would you say to them? Man? Let go all the hate, man. That hate wow. ruins you. You humanized him, which allowed him to humanize you. Like yeah. that. That's not rocket science, but yeah, it's it's evading the majority of the country right now. It's a lot of change that you're getting thrown at you right now, you know? Yeah, yeah, a lot. Mm-hmm. You guys have been lifelongs. And that's why I think ir- 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 irreplaceable, you know? We are operating as human beings from one of two places, fear or love. And we get to choose which one that is. Well, here we are. It doesn't seem like the stream is going to Facebook, although it says live on Facebook here. That's okay. We will uh, catch it later. And uh, what's more important is that we talk about this film. Peter Hutchinson, director of Healing from Hate. Sammy Rangel, one of the uh, features of this new documentary. Yes, Peter. No, I was just saying hi. That's me. Oh, welcome. Welcome. It's so great to have you both. The timing of this project is just, it, it, it seems destined. Um, who is the audience for this film and what has the reaction been so far? Well, I have to say, I think the audience for this film is everybody. Yeah. Um, when we made this film, we, we made it specifically to be a vehicle to inspire dialogue and conversation about these really, really important issues that are facing us as a nation. And, um, and I think we, we, we were really, we felt it was really important to have this film seen by as many people as possible in the run up to the election, but 
a lot of the feedback we've gotten has been, hey, this is such an important vehicle for healing and healing is so crucial to us at this point. Um, after all we've been through the last, last year, the last four years, um, that uh, I, I think in a strange way, it, it's become even more timely than, than it was pre-election. Sammy, how's the how's the how's the experience of sharing the film been for you in Life After Hate? Um, <clears throat> it's weird because, like, you know, to Peter's point, you know, I I think with the climate and culture of the last four years, everyone's been exposed to this, but it's also um, not been talked about in very relevant ways that invite people to be open about their feelings. And so, I think that while this has been the climate for a long time. Um, this is really the first time that people feel like there is an actual place to discuss these issues um, in a meaningful way, right? Like we're being honest, we're being transparent, we're not being dystopic about it, but at the same time, we're being straightforward and honest about what it's like. And I, I think people don't realize <clears throat> until this discussion happens is that there's another side to the issues that we're tackling here. And that, that side is the humanistic side. Right, because right now it's politicized, but in all of that rhetoric is our people. And whether they're victims or perpetrators, we're concerned about both sides of that coin. And this is a wonderful platform for people to one, talk about the issues that they're confronted with, and but maybe don't feel safe talking about anywhere else. And two, human, rehumanizing the issues, challenging the polarization, challenging this idea that it's it's too bad uh, to, to really bounce back from. like putting hope back, but not in some sort of naive way, but saying, you know, we actually have more traction on the ground here when it comes to civil rights than what we might feel watching the country roll out with uh, all the hatred that is currently facing all of us right now. The film has an unusual amount of intimacy that, that you wouldn't quite expect. And I, and I, I, I really appreciate that. And, and I wonder, you know, A, um, kudos to all the brave warriors that opened themselves up so that other people could connect and understand because a lot of folks just can't get their head around it. Um, what, how did you achieve that, Peter? And Sammy, what was that like um, having the camera there as you're going to have, you know, maybe some of the most difficult conversations a person's ever had? Well, uh, I think people don't always take into consideration that films like this take time. I mean, it take a lot of time. I mean, this film took over two years to shoot. And then it took us, um, you know, better part of another year to finish it. Uh, and a lot of the, that intimacy that you, you talk about, Anthony, it, it, I mean, it comes out of building relationships with people. Um, I spent a lot of time with Sammy and Tony and Frankie. And, and I feel that the time that we spent and the, you know, the respect that I think developed between all of us is, is what allowed for that intimacy to happen. And I'm glad that it comes across in the film because I do think it's, it's these really uh, very, very personal stories and the fact that these really courageous men were willing to share their vulnerabilities and experiences with 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 me and and you know with the other filmmakers involved with the film that it really you know it's it's really what makes the film work and and makes it important i think there's two things i'd add to that <clears throat> we get a thousand requests to tell our stories to expose people to the formers you know the people that we're helping pull out of these groups Every, everyone and their mother right now is begging to interview, but we've only done one of those requests and that's with Peter. And that's because the my biggest concern as a social worker in this space was um, the ethics and the values behind what we were trying to accomplish. I think it's one thing to tell this story in the way that it came across. And it's another thing to tell the story to, to, to reach your bottom line, right? And I think Peter really um, demonstrated respect for the sensitivity, the vulnerability, of what we were talking about. And, and to be honest, the repercussions if it's not done right or well, right? And, and so he, he 
took two years to build those relationships of trust and that and this is what's unique about i think the way peter tells the story is that it's it's so filtered with respect for the work the respect for the person the journey the the difficult nature that it it draws that out of people when when you create a safe place to talk about these things then real dialogue leads to real reconciliation, right? And there's plenty of room for reconciliation, but there's not a lot of rooms in which that can actually take place due to safety issues. Now, as on the other side, you know, while I'm the, you know, CEO of an organization, I'm also a former. And so I think an important message that comes out of what the former stories are here is that one, we're willing to be held accountable for what we've done. And we demonstrate that by facing the communities that we've harmed. We face that by undertaking um, like deep, deep causes towards self-reflection, right? And look, seeking out professional and personal help for oneself to try to face and overcome one, what's been done to us, you know, maybe that's uh, a side that a lot of people don't really think about, but also to overcome what we've done to others and then trying to figure out through service, what can we do to give back to the community to make amends, but also to contribute to the well-being of the of of the country and what we're facing right now. Wow, Marcus, get in here. Well, you know, so this this is very very important that to find find off roads for extremism in the U.S. is a is a, is a huge huge need. Um, so I'm really pleased that you've undertaken this. Um, body of work to put this film out to to make it make a go of it. The the uh, the, the question that might be in the minds of uh, viewers today might be, what's what's in this for me? What you know what what what's in it? For, how do I make this work for me and my family? What what do you guys have to say to that? Sammy? Can I can I jump in on that, Peter? Yeah, please. Absolutely. Please. I think one of the things that we learned after George Floyd and everything we saw there was that our country needs to demonstrate a period of reflection um, that we can go into ourselves and, and take accountability, take stock of our shortcomings and not leave it up to everyone else to, to feed us the answers that we're all looking for. So I think in one way, this is, this is an important lesson. I think it's a message to victims that there are people interested in trying to understand how they've contributed to the harm and how they can contribute to the good, like to try to counterbalance some of the stuff. So I think that's when it's important for the country to see that men and women who have done egregious things in this, in this country and around the world uh, can be redeemed. But in order for that redemption, what we take back to our families, if you ask me, is that we don't lose sight of the vision um, that starts and is deeply rooted in civil rights that we don't lose sight of the fact that there are possible outcomes other than terrible ones when it comes to these things, that no one is so broken beyond repair that we might as well consider them disposable or dispensable. And I think the third thing is it, it provides the understanding, not the excuses, but the understanding of what they're up against. And without this kind of dialogue, without that kind of understanding, you can't really come up with viable solutions. And so we may not fully understand what the country can pull from this, but we do know there are an enormous amounts of benefits that if we pay enough attention to this film, we could pull those out of it. Peter, you gave two years of your life to this man, you know, as, as an artist, as a storyteller, this is a, not a small contribution to make, you know. Um, and I, I know in documentary business, and, you know, this is not the business you get into to make money, to get rich, right? So you're pouring your heart into this. What, what drives you? What makes you, what makes this story compelling to you? And why did you give us two years of your life to create it? Well, I, I consider myself lucky to have had the opportunity to have been brought on this journey thanks to these these men that I, I really had the privilege to spend time with and learn from. Um, you know, I actually set out to make a film about masculinity in America. Um, I never set out to make a film initially about hate groups, uh, racism, hatred. Um, but, you know, I, I was given this very unique lens to consider looking at masculinity through from a friend and colleague, Michael Kimmel, sociologist who was working on a book by, of the same title at the time, starting to research it. And he said, listen, I'm just meeting some really remarkable 
men who I think could provide a very unique and powerful lens to examine what's going on with masculinity in America right now. And he introduced me to a few of these gentlemen and I got to know them and I said, wow, like these people's stories are so powerful and the work that they're doing is so powerful that this is a story that needs to be shared on a broader level than simply the, the world within which they were doing their work. So I, I really, I kind of, I consider it a privilege to have been, um, been given the opportunity to tell that story um, and to spend the time with these guys who, who I, you know, I can't say how much I've learned from them and, and mm -hmm. feel that I've grown personally out of it as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And, uh, we want to make sure our Clever Action family knows Peter Hutchinson is, is a fantastic director. He has his uh, film Requiem for an American Dream and Devil Put the Coal in the Ground. Uh, is that, that's in post-production as well? Yeah, we expect that to come out uh, in the coming year. And Requiem for American Dream is about Noam Chomsky. So mm -hmm. now with Healing from Hate, you know, they're, they're, and I'm sure there's other projects as well. Really smart, exciting documentaries that are a catalyst for real conversation and growth. We're talking with Peter Hutchinson, director of Healing from Hate, and our dear friend, uh, Sammy Rangel of Life After Hate. Sammy, we met uh, a, a few years back, I think in, in 2013, and and we um, got to tell part of your story on stage. Um, you connected us to Peter. Um, the last uh, eight years together have been quite interesting. I wonder how have you changed um, in the last seven, eight years since we met? Um, I, I, um, I've, I've seen some change. I wonder how you quantify it and, and see it and feel it in your life. You know, it's 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 crazy, Anthony. And I think I want to speak to the fact that I consider you family, you know, and and uh, and a dear dear friend, a mentor, and even maybe like a father figure in many ways, you know, just because of your role in the world and and how you treat people, including me, like and my family. My family loves and adores you as well. Um, and I'm not just blowing smoke up anybody's butt, right? I mean that coming from the heart. I don't just say those things. Um, I think we love you. Part, you know that. I do know that and I feel loved. I got love in the city. That's that matters to me. That matters to me. Um, I think that I've matured in some ways because I've been taken into some while I come from dark places, I kind of live in there. And I've been taken to some places that I had never visited before. And I've seen things that I haven't um, seen from this side of things, you know, but it, I grew up fighting white supremacy you know, in, in a rear and almost lost my life. A, a, a man died saving my life during a race riot. Um, you know, who, who he didn't owe me that, you know, and yet he, he jumped in to protect me and save me. Um, but going through this journey, I've had to mature in some ways because, you know, what I was doing before seemed so, so important. But when you follow the breadcrumbs, it literally takes you to the highest levels of this country and in this world. And, you know, I feel that this is the legacy work that I'm doing, that everything that I've done up until this point has prepared me to take on such monumental issues, like the kind of vitriol and hatred that lives in, in the United States. And I'm now fighting for things uh, in a way that I think are actually making a difference. You know, um, I've helped so many people across the, you know, the US and in the world, but at this point I feel like I'm contributing to history and to the future of this country, you know, and you feel uh, the importance. Somebody asked me the other day, like, hey, what's your next, you know, what's your next move in life? You know, because I'm always making moves, right? I become like this serial entrepreneur. And it's like, I don't have anyone right now. I don't have another vision right now because the team I've assembled, I owe so much to, because they, like Peter, have committed so much of their life to what we're doing right now that I can't even, I can't even bring myself to think about what's next because we're not done with this yet. You know, and so I, I think I hope that's what you see. I've had to do some reflection um, doing the film that when you made you basically made me play my role on, on theater. Dude, that was some therapy. That was some therapy level stuff that I it took what I had done in my personal journey to a whole nother level to have to confront it in a very different way. Peter was there to capture that like 
that was so therapeutic and, and life-changing for me. Um, I, I feel like I, I beat some of the demons in my life that might have been left over, you know, like whatever residual stuff by having to confront those very painful experiences, but in a way where it became artistic rather than a burden. In public at the Goodman Theater with 250 people there, including your your two daughters telling your life story. Talk about courageous. And I'll never forget that hug backstage right after you came off. It was um, more like a leap for help. Like I needed some support, man. You know, you're there for me, man. You know, yeah. um, my, I said to my daughter the other day, uh, if you could get paid a million dollars a year for the next 30 years and do whatever you want, what, what would it be? And she said, hug dogs. And then she wow. said, she said, what about you, dad? And I said, I do the same thing I'm doing now. I just get paid a lot more money. <laughs> and that's a, that's a great, that's a, that's where you want to be, you know? That's right. And, and, and uh, like the next move is just to be better, smarter, more productive and easier on myself along the way and everybody else. We're wrapping up here with Sammy Rangel, executive director of life after hate, Peter Hutchinson, the director of healing from hate. Um, Marcus, why, why don't you throw some profound uh, meta-theatrical question on the table for us to close up with? So I, I'll give the last word to, uh, to, to Peter, um, the storyteller um, in the midst of, of this great documentary. Um, if there was a line, a through line that you would want us to walk away from the film after viewing it, what, what story are you telling us? What is that narrative line? That's a great question. You know, uh, I think there's this line that comes up time and time again that I've heard uh, Sammy use, which is that uh, no individual is irredeemable. And I think the corollary to that is that no nation is irredeemable. And we, we have to keep that in mind in all of our dealings every day. You know, if these guys could go through the experiences that they've been through, and come out the other end to become the men that they are, uh, doing the work that they do, uh, helping to transform other people and being healers in their own right. You know, I, I think that's it's an incredibly hopeful message for everybody. Um, and I so also I wanted to note that you know, uh, you know, uh, Sammy was talking about his team before. Like, none of us do this work on our own, and it's really important for me to uh, recognize my fellow filmmakers whenever we talk about the film. Lucas Sabian, David Kuhn, who were indispensable. This film wouldn't have been made without them. And also, I, I'm hoping someday, uh, Anthony and Marcus and Sammy, that you know we can do something with all that collaboration footage we've got in the can that we've shot and uh, find a way to, to finish that project as well. Yeah, well, we're, it's currently, it's, it's writing itself right now. It's getting better every day. Thank you so much for, for joining us, Peter and Sammy. Uh, we are, if, if you've just seen Healing from Hate, uh, we hope you enjoyed a little time with these two fantastic uh, men. And um, if you haven't seen it, well, December 10th to the 13th, Clever Action and Life After Hate are co-hosting the Chicago Digital Premiere. And you know, if, if we're all doing a lot of work right now on ourselves and understanding how white supremacy shows up, this film is an asset that no one else is offering you, an intimate look at how somebody gets driven to hatred um, and also the heroes that are there walking people back to, um, to community. Um, thank you both for joining us. Have a also wonderful day. One last thing before we go, I wanted to note that just because this is a Chicago virtual screening, it does not mean that you have to be in Chicago to buy tickets and to watch it. Yeah, that's right. All our friends all over the world, we hope you'll watch it. And once you pay for your ticket, you get a password for the whole weekend. So you don't have to, you can watch it whenever you want. And this is a premiere. So this is not yet uh, distributed. If you want to see it, you got to do it this way. So um, we're just super honored that we were able to do this. Thank you, technology, for bringing us together. And uh, look at Clive Action and Life After Hate, our co-host in a party in the pandemic. Yeah. You know, that's going to be fun. Yeah. Much love and respect to you guys, man. I yeah. Thanks. The work you're doing, man. It's so important right now. People need that upbeat, 
straightforward messaging that you guys are distributing out there, man. It's it's part of the life's work that the city of Chicago needs, man. So thank you two men for the leadership that you exhibit during these dark times. I think we just got to We have to clone you guys and bring you to New York because we need some of that love and organizing and activism here. Well, I, I spent some time in New York, and let me tell you, you got plenty of <laughs> human beings over there that will change the world. Just hold their beer. <laughs> <laughs> that is an East Coast thing right, right there, man. We, we got to give our friends at All Stars Project in the Castillo Theater a shout out. Uh, we we were, were honored with the uh, winning the Castillo, uh, the Auto Award a few years back, and we got to show up a little bit. But New York is an incredible city, and uh, but we city of my prom. Yeah, we 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 <laughs> um, Sandra and Peter and I all went to the uh, uh, UNESCO uh, gala at the New York Public Library, where Sammy was presented a go, go, uh, global medal of hope from Forrest Whitaker. This guy is so humble that he wouldn't skip the line to get VIP into the VIP cocktail reception where he was like the honoree. <laughs> he missed the private party with all the kings and queens because uh, he didn't want to skip people in line, which is tells you a lot about, about Sammy. But then the, after the, uh, the, the gala affair, we strolled through uh, Times Square and Sammy in his tuxedo took a picture with the Hulk uh, and the Hulk looked at him and was like, wait a second, which one of us is the Hulk? <laughs> hey, thanks wow. for joining us. Much love, guys. Keep up the great work and thank you for your fellowship. Uh, this is uh, Collaboration and Life After Hate, getting all excited about the Healing from Hate screening here, December 10th to the 13th. Go thanks for making it. Uh, to get your tickets. Thanks for making it happen, guys. It means a lot to us. Oh, yeah. You're welcome. All right, man. Great one. Yes. Yeah.